Well, I had been doing drugs for more than 10 years. I was taking Vicodin. I broke my wrist and then as soon as they gave me Vicodin for it, it was over. Never done anything your whole life and all of a sudden you get a prescription for Vicodin. I feel like that is the worst drug that's ever been made. It's so addicting. The first pill I took, I knew it was over. I knew I was gonna use it. But I was also a very functioning addict, which everybody thinks, oh, you see an addict and you think that they're just the ones who are in the gutter doing slimy stuff, but you can still be an addict and not do those things. Doesn't mean you're not just because you're functioning. And that's what it was. I worked a full-time job. I was making good money so I could afford my drugs. I couldn't afford anything else. I mean, my bills were barely getting paid. It was bad. It was real bad. Like the days that I couldn't get anything, it wasn't about the money. It was about if you could find them or not. You'd be sick and not being able to function. And yeah, it was bad. So what brought me into Great Lakes Bay is I just got up, it was a Thursday morning, and I was just tired of being sick and tired. I was just tired of the chase and the everything. So I Googled nearest rehab center and 1016 came up. I live just a few blocks from here. The walking through that door Friday morning, whew, tough. That was one of the toughest walks I've ever had to take in my life. And thank God Greg was here. Greg is my peer counselor. He immediately stopped what he was doing and sat down on the couch and talked with me and we cried. He was a, a lifesaver. I wouldn't be here without him. When they brought me in, they had Paul bring me into this room. We had a conversation about what would it entail, you know, what the program looks like. Was I willing to commit? And then I had to go into physical withdrawals. I had to be in moder moderate withdrawals to be able to take my first dose of Suboxone. So they scheduled me to come in the following Monday. I went home and I withdraw it. It was Mother's Day weekend. It was hard. It was so hard. I really had to dig deep to know what I wanted. It was a whirlwind when I got here on that Monday morning. I walked in the door and it was all kind of a blur. They took me in and immediately gave me like a rating, you know, like rated how far into withdrawals I was based on my symptoms. And then they gave you your first dose to find out what your dose is, what you need to stay out of withdrawals. They do it in increments. So they would do like two milligrams of Suboxone and make you wait for 30 minutes and do two more milligrams until you got where you needed to be. The first day that I ever did it, I literally left here and went to Tropical Smoothie. The colors were brighter, the air seemed cleaner, even the ride felt better. I just felt so much more relieved. You spend every day, literally every couple hours, popping a pill or doing whatever you needed to do to be able to take something and be able to go the whole day and not feel those withdrawal symptoms. It was so freeing. It was so freeing. The first week of Suboxone, I was in, I was, it was pure joy. I was on the program for about 15 months. And then at the 15th month, I decided to wean down until I got completely off. Of course, at the end, I was nervous because I felt like I was gonna go into withdrawals again. It's a scary, scary thing to think that, you know, now that you're off Suboxone, that it's going to affect the way that you feel again, but it was all psychosomatic. So the Suboxone, I came off of it very easily. I didn't have any issues. I am completely clean and sober of everything, including Suboxone, almost two years in May. When without all three prongs of the thing, this program would not work. You have to have, you have to have the drug, you have to have the peer support, you have to have the therapy. If you miss any of those, there's a good chance you may get clean, but you won't stay clean because you don't have the coping mechanisms and the strength, the support that you need to do it. So it's important to make sure that, you know, all three systems are in place. In the beginning, I was resistant to, to groups. I just, I felt like I was a functioning addict because I held a job and all those things. I don't know if I can relate to these people, but what you realize is, that you guys are all on the same highway. You and I might not be in the same lane, but you're all on that same highway of addiction. So just because my car is on the right-hand lane and yours is on the left doesn't mean we're not the same, because we are. We are exactly the same. We have the same driving forces, the same lack of self-worth, all of that. All of that is, we're the same. One of the best uh, aspects of this program is the therapy. Oh, especially my therapist, Heidi. She's also another person who's very blunt. And I, like I said, I, I enjoy that. So she kind of led you to where you needed to be and let you make your own decision. But I think the most important thing she gave me was it's tomatoes. I know that sounds weird, but when I was a kid, I grew up in a rough home. 
But I, one of the things that I remember that's a warm fuzzy to me is my mom and dad used to have a, a garden and she would take tomatoes and put them in the windowsill for them to finish ripening. Well, then she would cut them up and put them on tomato sandwiches. Whenever I had the urge to use, I would tell myself tomatoes, which would give me just enough time for me to redirect my brain away from using. In the first two months, I probably said tomatoes about 40,000 times, <laughs> but I needed it at that point. Being an addict is not fun. Nobody wakes up in the morning and chooses to be an addict. So when I think about everybody out there who's still using, it, there is a better way. There's just a better way. You don't have to live like that. People who are out there using just need to know that it's possible. Because I know when I was using, I, not one time did I ever hear anybody say, oh, I'm, I'm a recovered addict. We're all flawed. So if you can be flawed and overcome those flaws, that's something you should be screaming to the hilltops because others, somebody may need to hear that. You just don't know. You just don't know what other people need. And sometimes just planting that seed is enough. When I think, feel like walking in the door is, it's literally a leap of faith. You have to want to get better. You have to. And it it's, will be the hardest walk you'll ever take, but it is so worth it. So worth it. I was 15 years old and I was an addict and I've been an addict my whole life. And I'll be an addict, but I'll be a recovering one. I promise that. And thank goodness for 1016, because without them, I, kn I know I wouldn't have made it. I would not have made it.